I want to share with you today a story about Israelis and Palestinians. But it's not about war, and it's not about conflict. It's a story of the technology bridge that we're building between the two people. So the story starts on an airplane in 2017. I opened my eyes just as the pilot announced our descent onto Israel. I could see the Tel Aviv skyline shining brightly in the distance and can make out the logos of Facebook, Google, Wix, and Waze plastered on the facades of the high-rises. Home. But this time, I was going as part of a delegation from Washington, there to observe different policy trends and shifting dynamics. Looking at my home through a fresh set of eyes, I was amazed by the technology boom that my country was experiencing. With over 7,000 startups, 400 multinationals, and 84 unicorns, Israel was one of the most advanced technological ecosystems on the planet and had earned the nickname of Startup Nation. But it wasn't all great. Startup Nation was in danger, one of our speakers informed us. She presented us with this report put together by the Israeli Innovation Authority that stated that at any given moment, there were over 15,000 job openings in technical startups and tech companies, and that those companies were just struggling to fill them. This was huge. Technology is by far Israel's greatest economic driver. And now it was at a danger of hitting a glass ceiling because of a shortage in engineers. The next day, I went on my first visit to a Palestinian city. As an Israeli citizen, I'm not allowed to go into Palestinian cities without a special permit. And I could feel the tension building in my body as we made it into the unfamiliar territory. I had a lot of preconceptions about what the city might look like or how hostile it may feel. Those were all shattered as soon as we made it into the beautiful city of Rawabi, the heart of the Palestinian tech sector that happens to be just a little over an hour's drive from the home that I grew up in. In Rawabi, we were greeted by a panel of engineers that told us that every year, 3,000 Palestinian software engineers graduated into the labor market, but that over 90% of them were unable to find jobs in the still nascent Palestinian tech sector. I looked at my colleagues. Were, were they hearing this? A shortage of 15,000 engineers in Israeli companies and on an hour away, thousands of Palestinians engineers looking for jobs. Could these pieces be connected? I certainly thought that they could. In fact, I was so convinced that I started TechBridge, an organization that connected Israeli and Palestinian tech. We worked with Israeli tech companies with job openings, and we encouraged them to fill those openings with Palestinian talent. Some were wary. They were just convinced that employing Palestinian engineers is not a good idea. But most were simply excited. They had no idea that there were Palestinian software engineers looking for jobs and were excited by the opportunity to hire local talent. We also worked with Palestinian software engineers straight out of college, creating a training program for them to hone in on those hard skills and gain that a little bit of experience before landing that first job out of college. Now, TechBridge is just one of many incredible organizations working to enhance cross-border collaborations between the Israeli and Palestinian tech ecosystems. And today, we have nearly 1,000 Palestinian software engineers working for Israeli startups and Israeli branches of multinationals. So Mellanox, for example, an Israeli company that was recently sold for $7 billion, employs over 150 Palestinian software engineers, 30 of them working remotely out of Gaza. Freitos, an Israeli startup in the freight industry, actually established an R&D center in Ramallah, a Palestinian city, and we are already seeing ex-Freitos employees going and starting their own ventures, fueling the Palestinian tech ecosystems and creating new jobs. 
And hopefully this is just the beginning. Now, there's so much more that I would love to tell you about the challenges and opportunities in this space. But in the next few minutes, I want to share with you what excites me most about it. So first, I'm excited about Palestinian software engineers working with Israeli tech companies because it's simply an obvious market solution to a market problem. It has incredible positive externalities, but at its core, it's business-driven, which ensures its organic growth. You have, a demand for Israeli, you have a demand for engineers on the Israeli side, and you have a supply of engineers looking for jobs on the Palestinian side. As we've all learned in introductory microeconomics, barring structural barriers, market forces will lead these two into equilibrium. In other words, it just makes business sense to match Palestinian software engineers looking for jobs with Israeli tech companies. The second reason that I'm excited about this space is because it's a rare instance where tangible action does not benefit one side at the expense of the other side, but rather creates a win-win situation, benefiting both Israelis and Palestinians and increasing economic prosperity in the region as a whole. So instead of dividing the pie, like in so many other instances related to Israeli-Palestinian relations, we're actually enlarging the pie. And finally, the third reason that I'm excited about this space is that it's simply an opportunity for us to get to know each other. As Israelis, Many of us have never met a Palestinian. And when we hear the word Palestinian, it's, it's often connected with violence. And many Palestinians have only seen Israeli soldiers who they are taught to view as their enemies. And suddenly, you have Israelis and Palestinians working shoulder to shoulder. This is an incredible opportunity for us to get to know each other, to replace alienation with familiarity and to replace a, a faceless enemy with a friendly face. So why am I telling you guys all of this? Most of you are neither Israeli nor Palestinian. Many of you are in tech, and I hope you find these market opportunities as exciting as I do. But even if you don't, I'm going to take a bet here and say that all of you have read about Palestinians and Israelis in the news, or had a conversation about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the past year, and thought to yourself, this is hopeless. So I wanted to share this story with you today to give you a fresh perspective, a story of hope rather than one of despair. So even if you have no connection to the region whatsoever, this is my ask of you. The next time you read about Palestinians and Israelis in the news, remember that there's also good news coming out of the region. Flip to the business section of the newspaper and look for the next Israeli-Palestinian founded unicorn and help bring a breath of fresh air into the global conversation of a decade-old conflict. Thank you. Thank you.